Hey everyone, Peter's Mike coming at ya. Just this past week, NVIDIA launched NVIDIA Cloud XR 3.0. And I wanted to talk about it in relationship to a lot of the work that we've been doing around Unity VR render streaming. And real quick, before we dive into this video, I wanted to know down in the comments below, if you knew before this video that Cloud XR 3.0 had gone out, or if you even knew about what NVIDIA Cloud XR was, because Quite frankly, at least as far as I can see, uh, in terms of VR news, it's rarely being talked about. Real quick, what is NVIDIA Cloud XR? It's a product that they've been working on for the last three years up to this point, and it is a plugin, if you will, to SteamVR and OpenXR that turns the SteamVR compositor into a adapter that connects basically over the network to a VR headset. The idea there would be that you are connected over a network, kind of very similar to Airlink, and you can send your input from the headset to this server or Windows PC for that matter. It will then render out any OpenXR compatible game and send that frame data over the network back to the headset. Very simple terms, this is pretty similar to all of the work that we've been doing with VR render streaming, where you integrate an SDK into your Unity application from the editor. You can then go ahead and hit play, and those frames are sent over the internet to your web browser for you to view within WebXR. And as you might expect, one of the reasons that NVIDIA is really excited about this space and actively building out the software and infrastructure for this is solely due to the fact that this allows them to sell more GPUs and specifically data center GPUs into various cloud providers and into various edge computing services, which is ultimately where you would see CloudXR start to scale. And in a sense, it's kind of a driver for more GPU business to them. Now with 3.0, they've built out some and more interesting features specifically around bi-directional audio streaming. So being able to say, take the microphone data from your VR headset and then stream that over to the VR render streaming server. And you can either use that say for multiplayer or you could use that for any, any sort of thing that you would want to do with that audio. And beyond that, they've of course, supported all of the various different headsets that are out there that make it possible from the headset perspective to connect to any server. And in that spectrum, they're supporting a wide range, obviously with Oculus Quest being the primary one, but also leveraging it for augmented reality, as well as for some of the smaller headsets, whether that be for PC VR or even HTC Vive standalones. So. If NVIDIA is doing this amazing work, why in the world am I even spending any bit of time looking at Unity render streaming for VR? Well, for starters, one of the reasons I've been personally excited about VR render streaming is because of the web XR aspect of it. That is not something that is currently supported by NVIDIA Cloud XR, and I know it is definitely something that Greg, who is the PM for the project, has talked about and said it's something that they have looked into, but it's not something that they're actively pursuing. From a technical standpoint, to be honest, I don't think it's anything crazy that they couldn't build, but with the WebXR medium being so volatile and constantly changing, I don't think it's something that they have particularly uh, wanted to invest time in. And they're honestly a pretty small team, so I don't blame them. And as I've mentioned in several videos, the reason I'm really excited in CloudXR in the first place would be the WebXR integration that really allows you to bypass the stores and not have to sideload any application. You just pretty much start your application and boom, you're connected over WebRTC to your VR running within your headset. And moreover, as I've stated in previous videos, Oculus, of course, bans you from having a client application that is deployed over App Lab or into the App Store that uses any form of Cloud XR. So in that regard, it's not a viable go-to-market strategy for really any developer at the moment, and it's strictly used within the enterprise space. And to be honest, there's, there's a lot of demand for it in the enterprise space, as you might have seen from some of their videos, where they're showcasing how it works with real-time ray tracing 
and some amazing car showcases. But the WebXR side aside, the other key advantage I feel like when when taking a look at the SDK is that it allows a developer a lot more control over all of the different parameters that go into streaming. And while yes, Nvidia is doing some really great work when it comes to compression and adaptive bitrate, for example, at the same time, it uh, doesn't really expose that to developers that easily. And so one of the nice perks of integrating it within the application layer is of course that you have access to all of that control and you can kind of tweak it uh, as needed based on how and where you want to deploy things. The, the other nice thing about having it in the application layer is that it is very transparent what you're trying to do, which means that you have a lot more control over how you're sending data between your application and the web client, whether that be audio streaming, for example, as was just recently introduced with CloudXR, but moreover, if there's any specific data that you want to get from WebXR or display on a browser, for example, you have a lot more control over how that's done and how you manage the server and how you manage the client, which you don't necessarily get with NVIDIA's CloudXR because of the fact that they are, for good reason, trying to make it agnostic to you as a developer, whether you're running locally on a headset or if you're running and streaming it to a client that might be running on a 5G network, for example. A couple other points that kind of have gotten me excited about VR render streaming uh, as a parallel option to CloudXR is obviously you don't, NVIDIA is doing this solely for the reason to, to sell more NVIDIA GPUs, but I, I do want to explore options that maybe run on AMD GPUs or potentially run on Intel GPUs as that's something that they have recently announced as well. And having a little bit more flexibility at the application layer to kind of pick and choose where you run, I think will be really important as we kind of move into the future. Of course, as I've mentioned in previous videos, the Unity render streaming asset really only works well within the NVIDIA ecosystem because of the tooling Unity has built out that uses hardware encoder support on just NVIDIA GPUs, but I don't think there'll be any reason why Unity chooses not to implement hardware encoding on various other different types of GPUs. And lastly, I think, as I've kind of hinted about giving control to developers to really kind of choose how they wanna integrate streaming into their applications, that there's the open standardness of it. I just, I think NVIDIA and, and, and 3.0, NVIDIA has made a lot of steps in exposing their APIs and making it a lot more friendly to work with. But to be honest, it's still not perfectly easy. And so one of the goals I had with kind of open sourcing, the work that has been done with VR render streaming is to make it some more of a community driven effort to how you could ultimately build out these solutions and optimize the networking and provide some open tooling that people could actually develop and contribute to as far as building out VR render streaming uh, solutions moving into the future. So that's just my thoughts on NVIDIA Cloud XR and how VR render streaming kind of fits within that narrative. Again, I'm really excited about all of the advancements that NVIDIA is bringing to the forefront when it comes to Cloud XR. And I continually still use CloudXR, uh, having gotten access to it. If you would like access, I do believe it's basically a closed beta that you can apply to, but they're fairly generous as long as you're within the VR space to get access to it. So if you're at all interested, definitely encourage that you apply and let me know down in the comments below if you do. But I think that does it for now. So thanks so much for watching and look forward to the next several sets of videos because I think there'll be some a lot of interesting stuff that we start taking a look at when it comes to VR render streaming that I can't wait to share. So until next time, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing